and good morning. It's Saturday, the 20th of December, 2014. Yes, gang, it's the live show before Christmas, and I have my Christmas jumper on, ding dong, merrily on high. Good morning. Oh, voice, voice is not quite with it uh, today. That is because <coughs> we had uh, a first uh, karaoke night last night in Sydenham, which is... In, oh, by the way, did you like the Christmas opening? Was you a bit late? Did you miss it? What a shame. You'll have to watch the recording later on then, wouldn't you? I spent a lot of money on that. At least £7.50 getting that done. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it, yes. Um, so last night... I have uh, did a new karaoke night in Sydenham, in South East London. And you're always a little bit worried about doing new karaoke nights. You're not quite sure how they're going to go. As it turned up, I got there and it was busy. It was busy as soon as I got there. And we started at nine o'clock. Um, within 15 minutes, people were singing and it went right the way through until about 12.15. So I'm very, very pleased with that. And the next one, if you're anywhere in the southeast London area, <coughs> the next one there is at the Golden Lion in Sydenham. OK, the Golden Lion, Sydenham High Street, and that will be just after Christmas on Saturday, the 27th of December uh, 2014. OK, so what I, I tell you the name, I tell you that, sorry, I tell you the year, because you never know when people are watching this. You know, maybe in 2000 years time, this programme will be dug up from one of those time capsules. You know, someone someone will have will have buried, you know, a little box set of my shows, and they might have been dug up somewhere. And we don't want people turning up to the Golden Lion in like two thousand and what was that noise? Don't say I've got the Skype noises switched on, have I? Oh, just a second. I hope not. Did I hear a Skype noise then? Or was that coming from here? Right, let's turn the phone off for a second. One second. Turn the phone off. I hope that wasn't... I hope that Skype noise isn't... Because I can never remember how to turn the damn things off again. Can someone send me a quick message and I can see if that blooming noise is on? Hurry up. Oh, Skype, yeah. Uh, there's a new Skype. Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk, OK? That's the new Skype. If you want to Skype in, we've got a new Skype. United Kingdom Talk. All one word. Someone Skype in, quick. Can't hear. No, nope. hurry up. Someone Skype. Send a quick message. Nope, don't think that's on. Good. Must have been coming from the mobile phone then, I guess. Uh, just. Oh, no, it is on. It is on. Oh, no. Hang on, options. We can't have Skype noises coming through. Sounds. Where it is? Ah, there we are. Mute all sounds. Thank you, Daniel. Try it now, Daniel. Can you send me another message, please, Daniel? Send another message. I need to see if the Skype is um, shut up now. We'll just wait one minute. Hurry up. Lovely, sorted. Oh, I can't have that bleep going off in my ear all the time. It's nearly as bad as you do something in a car, doesn't it? Have you noticed with a modern car, every time you do something, there's a bleep. Why is that? Why, have we, why are we now surrounded by bleeps? It should be a, a, a voice. You know, I could do that. I'd like to be the voice of Tom Tom at the next right in 50 metres. Turn left in 25 metres. Make a U-turn where possible. I could do that, Tom Tom. Anyway, back to the karaoke. So it was really nice to actually walk into a place that had people in there already. I'm so pleased. So pleased. And once again, uh, the next karaoke there will be on fr just after Christmas on Friday, on Saturday. Did I say Friday before? Sorry. On s Let me just check. Yes, on Saturday, the 27th of December, uh, 2014. OK, if you want to come along there, all free, all free. Good morning, let's, we've got some messages already. Good morning to Ben Parker, who says, um, uh, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, thank you for testing my Skype then, Ben. 
he said it must have been a nice change to have people there when you walk in. Well, it is. You know how some of these karaoke nights are. The first half hour, you can sit there talking to yourself or singing to yourself. So a very nice change in scene. Good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning to Daniel, who says it's a bloody shambles, as always. There's no shambles here. There's no shambles here. The reason that must be the reason that was happening, I guess, is because we've set up the new Skype with United Kingdom Talk now rather than uh, the other one. OK, so once again, if you want to Skype in this morning, the Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. All one word. OK, thank you. Now, where are we going to now? Just a minute. Uh, it is a shambles this morning, actually, isn't it? I'm, I'm just checking if there's a, uh, we've got a, any messages coming through this morning. Um, I'm completely lost here. I don't know why. Now, you see that Skype there that's completely thrown me off there? Oh, you like the new jumper, do you? The nice um, Christmassy jumper with Santa Clauses. Look, it's got Santa Clauses all around it. Do you like those? Oh, I wish I'd held in my stomach before I stood up then. Let's try it up again now. Is that any... No, it's... No different. Yeah, I'll put a little bit on away and the waist again. <laughs> and just before Christmas. So it's very difficult to lose it even before Christmas. Oh, we need to say uh, happy birthday to someone. Because uh, Terry H, it was Terry H's birthday on Thursday. And no one told me. No one told me. I think he expected me to see it on Facebook. But I don't, I don't know where that is. And I don't really check it. So happy birthday, Terry. <laughs> Dear Terry, happy birthday to you. There we are. Happy birthday, young Terry. I hope that makes up for not doing it yesterday. I do apologise, dear. Or Thursday, was it? Thursday, yes. You must tell me if you can have a birthday and you want me to sing. You've got to tell me. I don't know. Not bloody mind reader, am I? Huh? No. It's like these people that come up and ask for requests when you're DJing. Can you play me something? Yes. Well, something good. Yeah, well, what do you want? I don't know. You're the DJ. Play me something good. OK, I'll put on Barry Manilow. It's a miracle. Barry Manilow? Yeah. I said something good. I said, well, that is good to me. Well, I don't think it's good. Well, what do you want then? Well, you're the DJ. Play me something. And it goes on and on. How stupid people are. How stupid can people do be? And talking... What didn't make any difference, Ben? What hasn't make any difference? Ben's typing away. Come on, what hasn't made any difference? Uh, talking of DJing and sound systems, I had a gig on Wednesday this week, which was very, very posh pussy. We call it posh pussy. Like when it was really, it's like a really posh place. Okay, posh pussy place called um <laughs> i've got the title of it now it is a shambles today isn't it it's a shambles again um oh is my audio sound all right to you daniel ben now says the audio sounds bad no but i think that's my voice i think that's my voice ben i have a very bad voice today <coughs> sorry but that's Harry. I've, I've got a bad voice today. There's no bass on or anything like that. Do I sound all right to you, Daniel? Anyway, um, so Wednesday, I was playing at this club, called, uh, not a club, a place called Altitude. Now, Altitude is on the 29th floor of the Millbank Tower in London. It looks on the outside like a fantastic venue. I mean, it really does. Um, I've got a picture of it here somewhere. One second. Where, where's my picture? Let me turn myself down a bit for you, Ben. Is that any better? See if that's any better, Ben, OK? Um, <coughs> here's a picture of the place, right? Now, look at that. That's from outside, uh, looking, obviously, looking outside the window, and you've got the most beautiful views right the way across London, all right? I mean, really, really nice. The place, 
<coughs> is very modern and nice and they served food they have a meal to me it um the, the 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 portions weren't very big and that can be quite normal in like a posh place you get beautifully presented food which it was but not much of it <laughs> um the waiters and waitresses very pleasant nice and it's all very well sitting down and having your meal and having a laugh and all that but <clears throat> then it came to the music and there was me and another DJ there and the sound system in there is absolutely abysmal they've got little and I, I did this place last year I actually did the level before they've got like two sort of party areas that they hire out a top floor, the 29th floor and the 20 I don't think the 29th is a top floor but it's almost there and below that the 28th floor last year I was on the 28th floor the bloke who booked me to do this is an agent and when he um, rung me a couple of weeks ago to do this particular job I said to him have they sorted out the sound in there he said oh yeah he said they spent about you know so many thousands of pounds N not cheap so many thousands of pounds making a dance area so it should be much better now now the speakers in there are about the size of let's see one i would say <coughs> they were six meters uh, six centimeters square they are tiny speakers there is there was no bass whatsoever absolutely no bass at all just a lot of these small speakers all around okay um so i'm trying to work out where they have improved it Presumably the upstairs was the same as the downstairs. Well, it looked it to me because all I could see was the speakers. And then in the corner of the room, in a big room, beautiful room, in the corner of the room, I noticed instead of having the tiles on the ceiling, there was like a white fabric stuff. And I thought, ah, I bet they've put speakers under there. Now, at this point, the, the other DJ arrived because there was me. I was doing just the karaoke and there was him. He was doing the DJ. <clears throat> Why they had two of us, I don't know. But that's how it was. OK. And I said to him, all right, hello, I'm Chris. He said, I'm George. Lovely fella. He's from uh, Serbia. Serbia I was talking to him. And... Uh, he says yes they've they've made I think it, he said I think it's called a dance curtain or a sound curtain they've put a load of speakers up there think, I think there's about 12 speakers up there and I looked up you couldn't actually see the speakers through the um, white fabric but that's what they'd done oh right okay fair enough you know so we'll see how it goes later so as usual, as it's ex exactly the same as last time I was there, I got there about six o'clock. <clears throat> I came in, you have to have special permission to come round the back there, because it's all politicians and that, that work up, Conservative Central Office and things like that. So I came round the back, I parked in the loading bay, unloaded myself, I said to the bloke on the security, I said, I'll just be about ten minutes taking this up the lift. He said, yeah, no problem, just leave it there. OK, fine. So I went upstairs, set up. By the time I come back down, about half an hour had passed. And uh, I said to him, OK, mate, uh, I said, I'm just going to go and park outside now because you're not supposed to park within that venue. Just a minute. You've got to come back out through the gates, through the barrier thing, and then park outside the front of the building on the public road. He said, oh, right, OK. I said, um, how does it work when I want to come back in? Do I push a button or something or... 
does the bat do, do I need to come and tell you and then go and get my car? He said, um, oh, right, um, what are you here for? I said, well, I'm doing a karaoke upstairs. He said, what, um, in altitude? I said, yeah, 29th floor. Oh, right, and he looked at his TV screens, you know, the bank of TV screens. He said, I'll tell you what, mate, just put it round the back in the loading bay, it'll be fine now. I said, oh, right, OK. I said, I won't get a clamp, will I? Will I? He said, no, no, we do the clamp in here. He said, you'll be fine there. Um, oh, thank you very much. And that, that was extremely useful to do that. So I went upstairs, then it was about half past uh, six, as I say. The other DJ arrived, we had a quick meeting, as I said to you, a quick chat and a hello, and uh, got in with him very well, actually. And we, he put the background music on. So the background music was the same as it was last time, in that you started playing it, and they weren't ready to do anything till about 10 o'clock. So for three hours, we're now sitting there, waiting for sort of something to happen. There's nothing you can do. You just have to sit there quietly, you know, don't become obvious that you're there, you know, just kind of hide away in the corner while they're all having fun and having their meal. That's the job, okay? We don't complain, that's it. You know, you'd like something to happen a bit quicker, but it doesn't, but never mind. Um. About 10 o'clock, I would say, the DJ starts playing. I'm booked 10.30 to 12.30, OK? Although I've got to be there for the entirety of the time. So, again, you know, it, I think it was up until 1.30. But I, even if I finish at 12.30, I can't start packing up and going home. Not when there's people in there. There weren't that many people. It was only about 25 people. It was an insurance company. Um... So he started playing at 10 o'clock and I, I, I looked at him and I said, is this it? He said, what? I said, the volume. I said, is this it? He said, yeah. I said, oh my God. I said, this is no better than it was last time. He said, well, how can it be? They might have put more speakers in. But if the sound level, you know, if the decibels, do you know what the decibels were? 85. That's all it is. 85 decibels is the maximum that they can have in there. After that, the electricity cuts off. Well, it, actually, it doesn't. The electricity doesn't cut off. There's some sort of restriction that pulls the sound down, and it sounds really awful, really awful if you push it. I mean, it, it's just horrendous. And I said to him, I said, well, this is, if this is bad for you, I mean, it's bad enough for a DJ to have such low restrictions for a karaoke person it's even worse. In fact, it's nigh practically impossible to do a karaoke night with such a quiet sound system. It's just impossible. It really is. And the doorman came over. He was a nice bloke as well, a young man, uh, like a security bloke <coughs> that they have out there when they have these events. And... Um, I was, he was saying, to, I was saying to him, you know, the sound's really bad in here. He said, yeah, but they know it's going to be that low. It's apparently, you know, it says on all the bits of paper, you know, restricted to 85 decibels. The thing is, the normal person in the street wouldn't know that. In fact, if you said to them, you know, it's restricted to 85 decibels in here, they'd probably think to themselves, oh, you know, that sounds quite good, 85, you know, maybe 100 to the top. You know, if you were thinking about a volume control on, on a gadget, it might go 0 to 10 or 0 to 100. Well, in that case, if he was at 0 to 10, you might think in your mind, 85, so that would be about 8.5 on a 10 scale. That must be quite hard. Nothing could be further from the truth, let me tell you that now. That's what the normal person in the street would find, I think. 85 decibels, oh yeah, that sounds quite loud. And that's all they tell them. No one was dancing, and within 10 minutes of him playing, uh, the, that wasn't his fault, that wasn't, his, that wasn't the DJ's fault. Within 10 minutes of him playing, the, the lady came over and said, do you mind if we start the karaoke a bit earlier? I said, well, I'm fine. Are you all right with that, George? He said, yeah, yeah, that's it. So uh, we started trying to do the karaoke and um, <coughs> George went off to the bar, which was just across the road, uh, just across the room from me. And 
of course people go well, can you turn it up a bit well no well go on just a little bit I said no it's not me I can't turn it up this is it and I saw the lady go over to George and then George came over to me and he said she's really pissed off I said well I'm not surprised I said people don't realize how quiet it's gonna be she knows it's not us I said I know it was the same with the party downstairs they know it's not you now fair play the venue has spent had spent quite a lot of money installing this new sound area in the ceiling but it just didn't work it didn't make it any louder at all it was awful and then when people start singing their voice is always louder than the music and it makes it even worse and or, I, I think every single time someone sang they'd be getting them up and banging the microphone is this working it, well it is yes it was so quiet let me put it this way it was so quiet even when i done my chat in between thank you very much mary let roger come up and sing now i couldn't even hear myself that's how bad it was <clears throat> One of the customers came over to me, a <clears throat> very pleasant man actually, he was one of the singers. And I said, oh, look, I'm really sorry about it. He said, I oh, know it's nothing to do with you. I said, now listen, I know I this, they paid 7,000 pounds for this room, right? 7,000 pounds. That's $14,000 for this room. No, not, it's about 14, 12, about $12,000 they paid for this room from 7 p.m. till 1.30 a.m. And I said to one of the blokes, I said, look, do yourself a favour next year. What you want to do is go to a local pub that you all like, hire the entire pub for the Wednesday night, because it was Wednesday this was happening, and generally Christmas office parties happen during the week. I said, do yourself a favour, hire a pub somewhere where you all like, little local pub offer them 1500 pounds all in okay and if you really want to push the boat out make it 2000 pound and get your drink included as well get yourself a karaoke dj for the night in there and you'll be saving a fortune and getting much better than you got yes the food was lovely although I thought small portions the venue was lovely very very modern but the after party you just can't do it and I think it's shocking it's absolutely shocking how how money is taken from people and um, and they they just don't get the the proper deal really there's nothing the venue can do about it. I don't think there's anything the venue can do about it as I say fair play to them they've tried to do something about it but it just doesn't work you know so you might want to pass that on to people um, if you're ever thinking of uh, having a party up at altitude you know if you want just the dinner and a bit of quiet music then that's fine if you want a big you know a party night like a Christmas party for the office it just is not going to happen all right, so do remember that. Uh, that's the altitude room at uh, the Millbank Tower. Don't book that. Don't waste your money. Really don't. Of course, you know, it was another job to me. I got paid. Yes, I got paid. Yeah, but that's where the job was. What do you do? You know, you, you, you get offered a job. You've got an empty night. You go and take the job. A very old DJ friend of mine taught me that once. Um, Dolly DJ, that was his name. And he was, used to work at a place in Hammersmith called the Royal Oak. And he told me, my advice to you is, and I've said this to you before, if you have a night free and you're offered a job, DJ karaoke quiz, if you're happy with the money, take the job. That's it. It doesn't matter where it is, who it's from, the type of equipment, no lights, bad sound system it doesn't matter it's your job if the money's right take the job i've always 
works like that. More recently, I have to admit, I've become a little bit picky. I started becoming picky and jobs would come through on nights off because you know I've had some nights off recently because um, I, I lost the uh, Belushi's job unfortunately which was one of my best jobs of all time and you can't complain you know I had a good five year five years at Belushi's a wonderful wonderful time but new management didn't want karaoke thank you very much Chris but bye bye no hard feelings no problem with that at all had a wonderful run gutted that I lost it absolutely gutted because I loved it there I loved the atmosphere the energy in there and the fact that so many people from many many different countries but countries but it's gone that's it right so I had two nights there also odd Fridays and Saturdays started becoming a bit patchy and jobs were coming in I, I, I saw a couple of jobs and I look at them and I'm thinking oh 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 no I can't be bothered with that one and that's the completely the wrong attitude to take Dolly DJ was quite right get an empty night money's right take the job that's it end of no argument right I think being picky is a bad way um, funnily enough in the last week I've got a lot of work in a lot of work and I'm now check this out look at this I have booked through to June next year right other than five Fridays or Saturdays so it's five summer Fridays summer Saturdays I've got I think five left right the way through to June and I've got a little list and I think someone's gonna take those off me tomorrow those five so I've been extremely lucky with work and it's happened again and I've said this to you before you know a job finishes you, you, you have these jobs and they 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 go on and on and on you're sort of fairly happy with it no other work gets offered okay so you're hanging on to these jobs and you hang on you're thinking you know don't ever give this up because there would be nothing da, 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 and then suddenly it comes to an end right and you put yourself out there you try and find you knock on a few doors you might put a message on Facebook I have got a few jobs from Facebook before um, but nothing really and then at 51 you kind of resign yourself to the fact that you've had some damn good jobs Black Cap in Camden I was there for 18 years DJing first and then a little bit of karaoke a little bit of bingo as well 18 years wonderful I left there I actually left that place after 18 years I went back last year for about seven months and that was enjoyable but then uh, the management changed and they decided they only wanted promoters here so that was no good to me I'm, I'm not a promoter I'm a I don't really know how to promote I just do the Facebook thing and that's it um, fantastic job Belushi's the group as a whole I think I was with them about six or seven years again fantastic jobs wonderful wonderful time and then it came to an end um, years ago a place in Earl's Court when I was um, let me see that would be 19 uh, 92 02 12 92 91 around about 1990 Harpo's in Earl's Court loved it loved it loved it loved it but I think the governor was on a little bit of a fiddle there and um, it closed it didn't close it got taken over and they got rid of me gutted for that one as well because I really enjoyed that job but they wanted a completely fresh start you see and jobs come to an end and especially now when when a job comes to an end you think to yourself well that's it you know I've had some good runs oh I'm at two brewers in Clapham been there since 1999 still there although I had a three year break on that one somewhere still there great little job that is lovely job Thursday night that one um, they come to an end and you're thinking that's it at 51 you know who's, who's going to want me to do that now and then from nowhere a job falls in your lap and Ronnie said this to me to before he said you're so lucky a job just falls in your lap when you don't expect it it came from nowhere 
I was doing a karaoke the Sunday before last at the Cherry Tree, where I am Sunday nights between 7 and 11. That's the Cherry Tree in East Dulwich. Karaoke quiz night, that one. And about half past eight, quarter to nine, the phone rang and it was my mate Steve. Now, we don't speak on the phone. We know of each other. Now and again, a little Facebook message. That's about as far as it goes. But I've known of Steve for many years. And he said, uh, I'm thinking of giving up the Quebec karaoke. Now, this is the place I've just taken over on Mondays. I said, all right, OK, well, why is that then? He said, oh, I've just had enough of it now. I said, yeah, but why? He said, I've been there five years. He said, I've done that one now. I don't want to do it anymore. Do you want it? And I'm like, well, are you sure? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I don't want it anymore. I said, well, what, what about the money? Because he's not a, a wealthy man. <clears throat> and he said, well, I'm OK. You know, I've got this on Saturday and this on Friday. He said, I'm fine with money. I've no problem at all. I said, you absolutely sure? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, do you want it? I said, well, yeah, OK. I said, I'm free Monday. I've been looking for a Monday night. And I've been looking for a karaoke. Because I love doing, I love it. I absolutely love doing karaoke. And I said, well, OK, then. When do you want me to start? You know, thinking he's going to say, you know, this will be the new year. He said, uh, can you do tomorrow? <laughs> I said, well, tomorrow. I said, and you know, you don't, when you get a job that you want, you don't muck around, you know, yes, straight away. Yeah, OK, that'd be fine. All right, Steve, well, thanks very much. You know, put the phone down. And then when I got back um, to the computer, people were singing, I quietly tapped in there trying to find out because I, I, I want to go down to the venue first to see what type of equipment they got. Well, it's now nine o'clock at night. I'm supposed to be working there tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Uh, so at nine o'clock tomorrow night, I need to get down there. And I thought, well, I really don't want to get the car out on a Monday morning and go into town or get a train in. I wonder what time they're open till tonight. And I looked on the thing and they were open till one o'clock. Well, I was finishing at 11. So what I did is I lobbed all the stuff in the car and then drove around there straight away just to have a quick look at what they got. And you see what I mean? jobs they just suddenly appear <clears throat> those Fridays and Saturdays I've suddenly filled up uh, there's a lady I've worked with for many many years her name's Kelly and <clears throat> I told her I was looking for some work and then suddenly out of the blue came all these other DJ jobs on the Fridays and the Saturdays from her I have to pay her a small commission 15 pounds I mean it's nothing it's nothing for each job I do but that's that's you know they find you the work you pay them the commission it's as simple as that I never understand people that complain about commission they have to pay when they have asked the person to find them work well why did you ask them then if you don't if you don't want to pay the commission don't take the work from them that's stupid it's, uh, how stupid can you be and I've known Kelly have to turn up to places before um, to meet artists for the commission that she's owed. Sometimes weeks worth of it, hundreds of pounds. Why don't you just pay? Because the way I do it, right? So I do a job, I come home, I then switch on my computer and send her 15 quid off straight away. I mean, it's, how difficult can that be? So they come from her. Also, the Sydenham one has come because the people who work at the Golden Lion have now bought another pub. They're actually selling the Golden Lion, so I might be losing that one. However, they've got this pub in Sydenham now, and so I've picked up some Fridays and Saturdays there. And that's the one I think tomorrow He's going to, because we did the first one last night, it was such a success. I think tomorrow he's going to say to me, what, what other dates have you got? And as it happens, I've only got another five, um, <coughs> another five jobs, uh, another five Fridays or, I think it's five or six Fridays or Saturdays, right the way through until June 3. However, there is one in there, there, there is one of my Fridays, um, is a long way away. And 
I could give that one up to give it to the one in Sydenham. It's also a very, it's a very very late finish. This one on Friday, it's like a three a.m. finish where the one in Sydenham is about twelve thirty. Do you see what I mean? And it's a very long, tiring drive back from that one I do once a month on a Friday. So I could, I, I, I'm thinking about sort of. I'll see what he says tomorrow and then decide from there. All right, let's do some uh, messages. Uh, ben says. Um, were you in the sky loft? Oh, I don't know what it was. I think they call it altitude. Altitude. I don't know if it's the same as what it was when you were there, Ben. Excuse me, I just need to go have a little sleazy. Oh, oh dear. Oh, excuse me. Oh, gosh. Looks like we've got the Christmas cold, doesn't it? Um, he says, in the altitude gallery, uh, gallery, they show a female DJ using her own speakers. Oh, you, well, you can, but I don't know how that would work with the sound system. We're, we weren't allowed to take our own speakers up there. We weren't allowed to take our own. We had to plug into their sound system there, um, Ben. Uh, Kieran says, what to, want to know something funny? Tickets to a silent disco at Altitude London at Millbank Tower are now on sale. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, Kieran. <laughs> They're going to be doing a silent disco. Well, that might that could well work. Now, a silent disco is where everyone gets a set of headphones, right? And they've got these on and some sort of transmitter in there. And the DJ plays directly into the headphones. That can work. That could work. <laughs> oh dear we might have to finish soon I can't I can't speak for much longer today isn't it awful god awful yes um, uh, Daniel says it's a shambles as always you need more staff in the studio there's no one who wants to work here for nothing unfortunately Daniel I would love to have staff here in the studio but I have a feeling it's not going to happen I don't think we're going to get staff in the studio. Um, he says, you, you sound fine, but you look a bit rough. <laughs> in what way do I look rough, Daniel? And when is the United Kingdom talk Christmas do? Well, <laughs> there would only be me there. You know, yeah. <laughs> company dues are for our members in the company, not for anyone else. So I'd be the only one here, wouldn't I? Well, what's the point of that? I could sit here with a small small Christmas dinner for myself and a glass of uh, wine. I've bought a bottle of Prosecco to take up to my sisters. And I think me and probably me, uh, my niece and myself will be drinking that. I'll get the others one. I don't know if she'd have a little glass of Prosecco. I've never had it before. But my friend uh, who's on LBC, Steve Allen, he keeps talking about this stuff. So I went out and bought a bottle. And then... My mate Ron saw that I'd bought a bottle and gave me two of his because he's bought a load of booze as well for Christmas. I'm not a drinker, but I thought I'd have a little glass at Christmas, you know. Um, <coughs> ben says there's no room for staff. <laughs> no, you can't. There, there is no room in here. This is tiny, this little studio. I won't lie to you. It's a tiny little studio, all right? Uh, messages then. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. <coughs> Oh, uh. <laughs> oh! It's my best mate Ron. People are now replying on, on Facebook. And um, Ronnie wants. He he also says it's a total shambles. A to well, it is a shambles this morning, and most of the reason of that is because I can't speak. He said maybe you eat too much. Hardly have a thing, dear. I hardly eat a thing. Thank you. trying to keep up with these things here we are watching you two very blurry well it's not blurry anywhere else Stacey that's because you've got a very very slow internet connection my dear very very blurry and slow try refreshing the page okay there's an email address if you want to join in as well my email is chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk those of you uh, watching or listening to the um, recording of this show it's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk now Marge <clears throat> oh Daniel sorry Daniel says um, 
You haven't read all my messages. No, I'm not reading all your filthy messages. This is a clean program, dear. A very clean program, if you don't mind. Are you trying to call it? There's a new Skype, Ronnie, you idiot. There's a new Skype, dear. Ugh. Ronnie says he's, I bet he's calling in on the old Skype. That's why. Ugh. There we are. Ronnie's trying to call in on the old sky. He said it says it up there. It says it up there. He doesn't read things, my best mate Ron. He doesn't read things at all. There's a new Skype. Do you know how to work that, idiot? <sighs> right. <clears throat> so that's that. Very, very disappointing um, with the uh, new... Uh, with the uh, short video on Friday, you may have seen me attempting to make an iPhone ca or a phone case with a balloon, and it was very, very unsuccessful. I can't understand why. Oh, for God's sake. Are you stupid or what, Ronnie? There is a new Skype. Add it, dear. Add contact, United Kingdom Talk. Click add, and you'll be able to call me. Can't you see? What an idiot. Just look, it says it at the top of the post. How stupid can you be? What is that word you... I'm not going to use that word you use. Because people will be offended by that. I'm just uh, looking very intelligent now. Um, yes, so we weren't very successful with the making of a uh, uh, an iPhone case. Uh, as, but Marge said, that's because I burst the balloon. You're not supposed to burst the balloon, apparently. You're supposed to let the... Um, uh, the air out slowly right gang I have been sent in a little audio message from Marge the quality is not fantastic I warn you on that the quality is not fantastic but um, have a little listen to this alright if we can fire that up somehow oh is that not working either anyway. you had me on the edge of my seat with that balloon trick balloons make me nervous as heck I was sitting here holding my breath, closing my eyes. I thought, oh no, <laughs> what is he doing? You know, I think if you put the phone inside the balloon first, somehow if you could stretch it over the phone, then blow it up and then pop it, I think it would squeeze down on top of the phone. But then, I don't know, if, if you pop it, it's going to take off. I don't know how it can wrap the phone up, but anyway... That was the only thing. I thought maybe you could just stretch it over the phone. Boy, you have some of the funniest things that you come up with. <laughs> but balloons, oh gosh. I don't, I cannot handle balloons. When people start blowing them up, I usually leave. They're pretty to look at, but I cannot, I always think, that's going to blow up, it's going to pop. And actually, the towel over your head. You look like Mother Mary more than you did a mu <laughs> an oil field guy. Yeah, no, I'm just teasing. That's okay. Uh, your tree looks nice, too. Very cute. Um, I haven't decorated a lot. Being by myself, I don't decorate much. But um, it's it's. Uh, I've got a tree outside that I tried decorating, and the wind blowed everything down to the neighbor's house. I had to go gathering up bows and ribbons all the way down the road. But I got it tied back on. It looks pretty good, so uh, getting ready for you all, which is December 21st, and I guess I'll practice Christmas too with my brother on the 25th, so it's been cold and rainy here, and I'm trying to get over allergies or cold or something, keep sneezing. Anyway, I'm going to try this. This is like a two-minute file. I don't want to take up a lot of time. Tried calling in last time, and you were a little busy trying to get to me, so I thought, well, maybe you can squeeze in a audio file um i couldn't recall if they were mp3 or wave that you could accept i thought it was mp3 but i have short term memory anymore will you quit try my cat's trying to get on the mic you want to say hello to chris are you gonna purr i don't <laughs> yeah i don't think you can hear him purr where did uh oh my phone just went black hang on oh i hate this thing Okay, it went black. Um, screensaver. Oh, 
Bye. Chris Reardon. Right, there, there we are. Now, how we do, are we there? Are we sorted? Hello. Chris Reardon. Oh, just a minute, Ron. There we are. That's a little uh, message there from Marge. I know it didn't sound too clever. That's uh, I don't know why. It's uh, the way it came over. So thank you very much for that, uh, Marge. Nice to hear your cat talking to me. Good morning, Ronnie. Oh, finally. Oh, don't. I've suddenly realised... Right? Oh, God. It's just so Go Apologise. No, I've realised... Apologise. If... Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Now, let me tell people <laughs> what's just happened. OK? So, as you know, we've set up a new Skype for the show. The Skype call-in is United Kingdom Talk. That's the new Skype name. Now, I have a Skype phone number, as you know. 6358 okay that's the skype number of course the skype number is connected to the old skype so oh. <laughs> so you're trying to call in on the old skype which i'm not using anymore and anyone else trying to call in on that phone number <clears throat> and as you know <clears throat> There are thousands of people trying to call in on every there show. There are not thousands of people trying to call you. There's not thousands of people trying well, to call anyway, you. Well, anyway, so you that, number, that, number is not, that number is not connected to that Skype. So I'm going to have to look into that. I, I completely forgot that that's what's going to happen. That's not going to work. Oh, I, don't, I oh. don't normally use Skype, to be honest. No, I know. But where you was going on about it, I thought I'd send you a message. But I signed it. Oh, it's a big load of aggravation. I hate Skype. It's a load of rubbish. But you could have used Skype to call in. Uh, well, why would I use Skype when I've got a perfectly good iPhone 6 plus 128 gig in space grey? Why would I do that? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm having <laughs> trouble talking. Can you carry on for the next 10 minutes, please? Thank you. Can, uh, you're having trouble talking? You're having trouble talking? I don't is, think so. My voice is nearly gone, dear. As, as is your personality and career, dear. Oh, get on with it. My career is well, not just, gone. Didn't you hear me? Didn't you hear what I said? No, I, I might have put three. I might, I might have put you on three of my devices in various rooms around my house, but I'm, I'm used to doing them. <laughs> I'm fully booked until June. Oh well, yeah, but that's except Wednesday. Yeah, but that's that, that's all they're doing is just they feel sorry for you, dear. You what? They feel sorry for you. I'm fully booked except Wednesdays. I'm looking for a Wednesday now to complete my week my my week's lineup. But you don't need to work every night of the week. We do. You we don't. Do. Have you told me that you've enjoyed sitting at home and you know I being do snuggled enjoy up on the sofa home. with the heating on? Yes. But I like work. I'd like doing my jobs as well. I'm very, very lucky to be doing jobs that I love. Oh, uh, I suppose so. I suppose so. I suppose so. Well, I was just ringing up to say hello, really. Hello, is that it then? Bye. And to say and say hello to all of your four viewers. There's more than 12. I'll tell Four. you what. Do you want to carry on talking while I go and put the oven on? Not really. Oh, OK. I'm going now. I just thought I'd ring up to say hello. What are you doing this afternoon? Um, nothing. Oh. Are you popping over for tea? No. No, Why I'm still in my dressing gown, dear. I had a lay-in this morning. It was very nice. <laughs> when don't you? I, uh, uh, I get up most mornings, thank you. <laughs> when was that? Yesterday, day yeah, before, look, look, day I've got this thing that. here. I've got, I must tell you this: how not to be common at Christmas. That's very difficult for you and your family, dear. You what? That's very difficult for you and your family. How dare you, peasant? Have you me have you met yourself? Have you met yourself? Um, yeah, but I. Uh, but the thing is, is I know that I come from a common family. Th you, you. No, tried I never to, said you, that. You... I never said that. You are common. You. Yes. There's nothing wrong with being common. Avoiding comedy. commonness. Look, Christmas but trees. Chav, Chav, like you, dear. No, you're and the don't chav. say you're not you're because you wear Lonsdale and you're rubbish like that. I'm a man proud made fibers. to be a Lonsdale person. Proud. You're, uh, you're, are you a proud Chav, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this. Look, 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 look. Listen. Things, things that tell you the common at Christmas. You ready? Number one. Number one. Christmas trees should be decorated only on the day before Christmas Eve. Having oh, them winking away for a month 
is frightfully common and decorations should be taken down pronto on the 12th night. Oh, I take them down on the 12th night, but you do, I don't... Why, why would you wait till the day before Christmas Eve to do it? Because then you get the full effect of having that tree and its beautiful decorations, which you have, just for a few yes. days. You lose, you lose the big sort of bang by having it on for so long. Not really. Number two. As for tree decorations, they are best if traditional. So you've got that right. Even Absolutely. cotton wool on the tree is quite chic. And, and I love tinsel. Oh, but, it's hideous. Wait. Tinsel is hideously wait. common and nasty. But the fashion for putting things such as miniature blue and white Chinese vase decorations and other non-Christmassy items is desperate over-styling. The prettiest tree baubles can be found in Moscow. That's where I buy mine. No, you don't. I bought you yours last year. You gave me a £20 budget. I'm reading... I'm reading this from the Daily Mail, dear. The Daily Mail. I know, but you gave me, but you gave me a twenty pound budget last year to go. Number. You wanted me to go to Poundland. Number three. And get your three. decorations. Number three. What is this fashion for taller and taller trees? Soon they need to have Kylie Minogue on the top as the fairy. Over elaborate trees are vulgar. Yeah, well, mine's not over elaborate. Mine fits nicely. Mine's about six foot. Well, you were saying to me only yesterday, do you think I'd get an eight-foot tree in here? Well, it's only because John Lewis are selling, are selling them at the moment. They're very, very nice. The pear, the, the pear shaped one, a bit like you, you're a bit pear-shaped. Well, double pear. Sorry? Because you're more like an eight shape with the, the size of your waist and your chest. Double pear. But, um, yeah, double pear. Double pear Chris Reard with sausage fingers. I've never heard of that before, double pear. Mm. Double pear. <laughs> so there we are. There's just a few little bits there. Oh, well, I'll have a, little, I'll have a little read of that in a oh, minute. Oh, one dear. more, dear, one more. Number eight. Christmas-themed clothes are simply too awful. The other day, I saw a jumper with a pair of reindeer on and written beneath them, Hello, dearies. Mm. That is quite hideous. <laughs> and number 15. Cards, number what was 15. Right? Christmas Day should be church, a walk, early dinner, and watching the Queen's speech at three o'clock. Do you do any yes. of those things? Do I do any of those things? Yeah. Um, I watch the Queen's speech. Please, God, don't let her abdicate. Please, oh, God, yes. don't let her abdicate. Yeah, she said she was going to. I've heard little stories about that. that yeah, she's going to oh, God, we don't need Charles any longer than we have to. I hope not, dear. No, really I hope, hope not. not. It should jump. It should jump. It should jump. It should jump because of that awful woman that he married. Yeah. Whose name I dare, dare mention. I might awful. swear. Awful. Awful woman. Oh, well. Awful, awful woman. Nice to talk to you, dear. Anyway, thank you. Call me later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we are. Little friend Ron. And I actually had to sign. <laughs> I had to sign out of the Skype to go into that one. Hang on a minute. Let's go back into the other one now. Oh, dear. It is an absolute shambles today. You are quite right. Um, Daniel in Camberley. So we go back into this one now. And then we'll be back in. And we're nearly done. And just to let you know... Um, oh, there we are. That's better. <laughs> da -da Daniel. There you Daniel. Cloves do not make the man, Ronnie, and I would hate Ronnie's credit card bills. Oh, they're massive. What was it he bought the other day? A pair of jeans for like 120 quid. A pair of jeans? 120? Off his head, dear. Off his head. Merry Christmas, Ronnie. He says you don't... <laughs> and Daniel says um, you don't get this shambles with Steve Allen. I know. It's a real shambles today. An absolute... I love that word, shambles. I do like that word. Um... I think Daniel's trying to call in as well. Are you trying to call in, Daniel? Let's have a go. Let's have a go, Daniel. Let's see if we can call back him. Because he's been trying to be calling on the other one as well. So I might have a new um, telephone number for you next uh, next week when we're sorted, OK? 
Are you there, Daniel? No, he's not there. Okay, not to worry. Uh, just to let you know, my asthma has got a lot better recently. I mean, to the point where I'm barely using that blue thing. And I've been using that blue thing quite a lot for a number of years, maybe four, five, six times a day. And I was looking on the internet at asthma, and I came across this section from a lot of people were replying and saying, yes, that worked. Two things I've been doing over the years. Number one, really turning the heating on. I mean, really, 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 okay? And number two, drying clothes over the banister at the top of the, of the, top of the stairs. And I've stopped doing that and put the heating on constant at about 18 and a half degrees, 18, 18 and a half. I find that quite comfortable for me. Well, the asthma has practically stopped completely. I'm still having my little brown buffer thing that's supposed to be a preventer. But in all honesty, I haven't thought it had ever done much good. Um, so that's seems to have enormously i would say my asthma has improved over the last six weeks 95 percent so there you go if you've got asthma have a little think about that do you have your heating on very often do you dry clothes in the house what i do now i've got a clothes horse and it's in the kitchen and I drive the clothes, um, uh, drive, I dry the clothes on there in the kitchen and it's got a little vent so the moisture goes out but it doesn't come through the house anymore. So there's a little thing for you there, okay? That's it for me today. Uh, I have a feeling today's show wasn't very good. It's difficult to talk <laughs> and it's a shambles. But never mind, we got to the end, didn't we? I'll do a couple of short videos for you next week as well. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do them every day because, of course, we've got the Christmas thing coming up and all that business, but I will do them. All right, I'll try and do a couple next week at least. You never know, you might get one every day, but if not, then sorry. Thank you for watching this complete and utter shambles today, which for me hasn't worked. I hope it did for you, though. Have a nice Christmas. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>